Hi everybody, welcome to my floss tube. My name is Doreen and my business is Privies and Prims. And my channel is mostly cross stitch and punch needle with a little bit of wool stuff thrown in there. So uh, today is the day before Thanksgiving and I've got a bunch of stuff in front of me here and I don't have a lot of stuff fully finished. I just, you know, I get in those moods to do um, finishing days and then like, I'll knock out three or four things in one day and I haven't been in that mood since my last floss tube so I don't have I think I have two full finishes to show you and one of them I might have showed last time I'm not sure but um, I've got a lot of new subscribers coming in and I thank you each and every one of you for coming in I appreciate all of you and I definitely appreciate all the ones that have been with me all along and so we're going to get to this, but just know that I appreciate you. And if you haven't yet, hit that thumbs up and hit that subscribe button because it's totally free. So um, we're going to get to it. So I do have one FFO fully finished object. And again, I am not sure if I showed this last time. I, because I show things on um, Facebook on my Privies and Prims page, and then I show things also on Instagram, which is during Brandon.Privies and Prims. Those links are down in the description box if you can't find me. Um, but this is from the Punch Needle Primitive Stitcher magazine, the December 2023 issue. It's on the cover, and it's, it's a little different. Um, right over here, there was supposed to be um, some ice skates, and I didn't do those, and it's because... I put something, I think this was in the wrong place. Something was in the wrong place. So I just brought this, which I think was supposed to be up here. And I put it down here just to balance things out. And this frame um, I got at a store in Pennsylvania when I was there in March. I think I paid $6 for it. And it is wood and there's no back. So I just have painter's tape on it. And this is just that foam core. So there is a piece of a flannel um, bed cover like a hospital um, cover between the stitching and the foam core so um, I'm really happy with it and I think I got everything else there's just like I said there was a little bit over here oh and there was supposed to be snow at the bottom which I left out because I wanted to make sure that it fit in the frame and there it is you can see the little garland at the top so I am really happy with this. And look at the frame. You see that this was painted white when I bought it. So I had to paint it black. And then I um, brushed this dark barn red on it. And it kind of blended in with the black. And then I sanded it a little bit. But some of it where I sanded it, the white showed from the, um, the white paint that was underneath it. And I didn't really want it to show white. I don't mind it showing natural wood. But I didn't want it to show white um, because it, I just wanted like more muted colors. So I had to dry brush just a little bit of that red back on there and then um, put a watered down black paint over it to antique it. And then I sprayed it with clear spray paint. So that is it. And that is by Shakespeare's Peddler, which is the kitten stitcher. And I stitched it on, I think it's Osnaberg. And it's one over two. I use Osnaberg a lot. So I have one more full finish. And that is this one. This cute little pillow. This is a freebie pattern from the Primitive Hair. And I, I think it's supposed to have a date over here. I don't really care for putting dates on them unless it has some significance to me. But it was like 1800 and something. And I just left that off. And just put a little rusty um, safety pin and a bell on there and, then a, and a little rusty ball and then this trim right here it's like a, it's almost like a twine burlap trim that is actually from Dollar Tree in their craft department and that is on some kind of mystery linen I don't know what it is and it's again one over two and this is how I did the back let me get some light on this. There we go. So this is where, if you're new to my channel, I don't leave open here for stuffing. I cut a slit in the back. And that's how I covered it with a piece of wool and sewed a button on there and put my label on. 
The labels, I always get questions about the labels and they are from um, a company on Etsy and they also have a website and it's called Ever Emblem. It's all one word, Ever, E-M-B-L-E-M. And that's where I got those labels from. And mine are iron on. You can get iron on or not iron on. I guess the other ones are so on. So be sure if you're going on there to order some, make sure you're checking the boxes of what you want. Now I have some finishes that are punch needle and two more cross stitch. So I am, if you're new here, I'm a model puncher for a shop and uh, the Shepherd's Needle in Little Rock, Arkansas. So if you go there, you'll see some of my things that I've done. And so I have six projects that I'm doing for her right now. And I have three of them punched. I just finished the third one. And people ask me all the time, how long does it take you to do that? Well, each one took one afternoon or evening. So they were pretty quick. Um, so, and as far as the order, y'all voted in on what order I should do them. I did a demonstration the other day at um, a senior center on Monday. Uh, some ladies wanted to learn how to do punch needle. So I took um, the one that I had on the frame and it was not my favorite. My favorite is this one. I haven't done that one yet. And I am going by your suggestion and saving that to last. Um, but I, I won't say which one was my least favorite because I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. But I took two together. They were on um, a frame, this gripper frame here. And I had one here and one here. So that way I could make better use of my weaver's cloth. So I will show you what they were. These are the two and they are not fully finished, but the punching is finished. So there they are. And I'm going to show you, this one actually is going to get coffee stained and then made into like a little pillow. And this one, I have to, I've snipped these as you can see, and I have to um, glue those back. And then it's going to get a piece of green wool on the back, but we're still deciding what to put around the edge because the pattern has like a mini pom-pom on there and we don't want to use that. I don't really care for that. Um, there's the information on that pattern. And these are all in the Christmas 2023 issue of Primitive Punch Needle Primitive Stitcher. So this is getting this dark green wool on the back. That's what'll go on the back of that. But we have to just decide um, what kind of trim use around it and I just haven't got that for yet. Like I said, I'm not in the finishing mood. When I am, then my brain will work better and as far as making decisions like that. Um, the snowman and this is kind of how he's going to be only he's going to be coffee stained. So um, the person I'm doing them for already has a hat. It's decorated and everything so he'll get a fancy hat but that is this one. So I still have to coffee stain him and then I have a piece of black felt that goes on the back and then he'll, I guess he gets, yeah, he gets stuffed, but I have to leave an opening down here for her to put whatever she's going to put inside. And as far as putting these backings on, I will hand stitch them. So I will glue this to the back and then, um, I will hand stitch the wool backing and then lightly stuff it. This one I might change my mind. I might do this by machine since it's going to be stuffed. So those are those finishes. And then the third one, which is the one I just finished, this one is a little different. This one um, I wasn't looking forward to, not because it's not my favorite, because again, I'm not going to say which one's not my favorite or my least favorite, but um, this one was, and I'll show you the pattern here. It was something that I had not worked with before. And it was this, is what I was to punch with. So it's silk lame braid. And you see how thin it is? It's really thin. So I thought, gosh, 
if I'm going to punch with that, how like this is like using two or three strands, like it's going to take me a really long time and I'm used to using six strands. So um, what was sent with it to me was some DMC in case I, I wasn't sure if she wanted me to use it in case I ran out of this or if she wanted me to mix it together. So what I actually did was I used six strands of DMC and this right here as it comes on the package and they fit together very easily in my medium tip needle on my ultra punch and I punched it that way. So it doesn't have as much sparkle as if I had just used this, but it does have sparkle and it went pretty quickly because the, the DMC was on there. Now, I don't know if you can see, you might be able to see some of the sparkle, but you can see it in person. Now, see how this is curled over? I just took this off of my gripper frame and I left it like this on purpose because I wanted to show you something. Now, there are spots here where he will get um, buttons here and here and then these three spots up here. So they are not punched. And you can see on the back, they are not punched. They are left for the buttons. So it gets peppermint buttons and they are on order. And then when they come in, I will... Um, so the backing onto this and put the buttons on. But I wanted to talk to you in case you do punch needle. Do you see how curled that is? That's how it comes off of my frame. And then I steam it. So that's what I wanted to talk to you about. I have made a video. There is one on my playlist, um, which by the way, there is a playlist for um, punch needle tutorials in case you're wondering. Um, Somebody had um, wrote a comment and said that they just found my channel and they're new to punch needle, but most of my videos are cross stitch uh, or most of what I'm talking about is cross stitch. If you go to my channel homepage and click on playlist, you'll see a playlist for wool applique, a playlist for, um, I don't know if there's one for rug hooking or rug punch, but there's different playlists on there. And one of them is punch needle tutorials or how to punch needle or something. There's 47 videos on there, I think, the last time I looked. So you'll find a lot of tutorials, a lot of information on there. And then if you go to the wool applique link for that playlist, you'll find a lot on there that will help you. So what you do with this to steam it is in the video I had in the past, I just did it on the floor, but now on this table back here, I have a, a wool pad and it it's pretty good thickness. So I lay this down on it and I put a damp washcloth on top of it. I just run the washcloth under the water and then under the, you know, the faucet and then squeeze the water out. And then, so this is laying on the table on the mat. I lay the um, washcloth over top of it and then I press with the steam iron and I just hold it there and you'll hear it sizzle. And then, you know, you move it around, you move the cloth around to make sure you get it all over. And then I flip it. By that time, it's pretty much flat. But then I flip it and I do it again because you see this is like curved up like a ball, like a bowl. So then I do it again on the other side and then I just lay it out to dry. So that is how I steam it and get rid of that curl. So and it just takes a couple minutes. So. Um, this actually was not hard to punch with at all because since I mixed it with the DMC, um, you know, I didn't even know it was there. It wasn't really any different at all. It did catch a little bit once in a while and it wouldn't, um, go as smoothly through as the DMC did. And I don't know if you can see all the little bumps there, but all in all it, I think it turned out really well. And you can see a little bit of sparkle, but you can see it more in person. So that one, like I said, I was intimidated because it was something new to me and um, it ended up not being bad at all. Oh, and another thing, sorry, I'm reaching down to the floor. The hat on this, the red is raised up above the white. So the white is done on a number one on the punch and then the needle is raised up to a number three on the ribs, on the red ribs, and also on this pom-pom. So um, that's what the directions call for, and it makes it a little three-dimensional. So don't forget you can do that. It is in the instructions on that one, though. All right, um, cross stitch finishes. So I didn't have, I'm a monogamous stitcher, in case you're new here and you don't know. Um, 
except for when I did that Teresa Kogut one right there. I did break off and do, I think, one or two smalls while I was doing that. But otherwise, for the year, I've been stitching one year this month, and um, I'm pretty monogamous. So I was, I didn't have anything to work on because I had finished the Merry Little Christmas one. And then I was sitting down to watch a Hallmark Christmas movie one night. And I have to have something to do. I can't just sit there and stare at the, um, I watch it on my laptop because I don't have a TV. So I just can't sit and stare at it. So I pulled out the scrap and I did this little snowman and I do need to move his buttons. I think they're off center, maybe, I'm not sure. I'm going to check that. But anyway, this is just a little scrap of prairie cloth and I just stitched him and I'll just make that into a little pillow tuck, um, bowl filler kind of thing. So that kept me busy for a couple hours. So that's an idea for you to do. Now he is from this pattern and it's really hard to see this picture probably. Our pictures are kind of dark and it's far away, but that is, um, there it's called Merry Winter 1809 Snowman Pin Keep. So she is on Etsy. I have a lot of her patterns. And the snowman is from there. So then I got some different fabric and I stitched them here. Now I did not, again, do, I didn't do the date. It has no meaning to me. So I didn't want to put it on there. Um, I'm wondering though, and I put this on Facebook and on Instagram, I'm, I'm considering, and I'm probably going to try it because I can take it out if I don't like it. But this is like a soft brownish gray. And I think I'm going to outline the snowman with that to do back stitching because he just blends in a little too much. And this fabric was given to me. And this is what it is. It's just, I guess it's like a sample, but that's what I used. I just grabbed something and I should have used something darker because I also want to coffee stain this. So I think I'm definitely going to have to outline him, but, um, if you look at him, his body's a little wonky. Like one side might be straight up and down on the other side. Try to get this light better. He's not like perfectly rounded and balanced on each side, but that's the way the pattern is. This one, when I did it, I did it so it was balanced and the same on both sides. But the pattern, the chart, actually calls for it to be a little wonky like that. And maybe that's just because it's primitive. It doesn't bother me. I kind of like it being wonky. So I'm going to leave it. So those are my finishes. These need to be made into little pillows. The other stuff, I told you what needs to be done with that. Um, the rest, there's three more punch needles that I need to do. I don't think I'm going to start a new one tonight because I finished this snowman last night. And it was the first time I had stitched, like I had done three days with no stitching and I really miss it. So I think I'm going to stitch tonight and then tomorrow, of course, is Thanksgiving and I probably will go back to the punch needle tomorrow because I leave on my trip um, next Friday and I would like to have them all done before then. But I don't know that it matters because she's still sending me pieces like the buttons and things like that. So, but if I get things done, like four or five of them, three, four, whatever, I will send them back to her because like I said, they're shop samples and then she can use them. But these are the other three in case you weren't here last week. This is the one I need to do. And that is a pocket. And there's the information on that one. And again, these are all in the December Punch Needle Planet of Stitcher magazine. This one, I thought this one was going to be the most work, but it's actually really small so it's got a lot of detail in a small space and that's the information on that one and what I did the other day is I traced all six onto the weaver's cloth so I have them all just ready to go um, and then this is my favorite and it's also the largest if you can see the pattern vaguely there it's pretty big it's almost the full size of the paper. So there's the information on that one. And it is also ready to go. 
Just need to put it in the frame. All right, I think that's all for that end of the table. Um, I have a little bit of haul. Today I went to Joann's and you know, um, they do have floss for 50 cents right now for DMC floss. And um, you need to check out the 14 count Ada girl on Instagram it, or I think she's on Facebook too. Um, her name's Tina and she does all her stitching on 14 count Ada. And she does beautiful, beautiful um, charts on 14 count Ada. Well, she went to Joanne's the other day and she bought 302 skeins of DMC floss because it was 50 cents. And I think she said, if I remember correctly, her receipt was like eight feet or 10 feet long, but there's a picture of her standing back with the receipt way out on the floor in front of her. And you need to go see that. And then she posted a picture where she took all the floss and made it like into a heart, which was pretty cool. So if you see that picture on her Instagram, it's, the post before that, but you'll see the receipt. Well, I went today just because I needed some red floss to finish that snowman with the sparkles. And um, I wanted to get a new pair of scissors. So these are my favorite scissors for doing punch needle because they're curved. You see the curve on there? Let me hold it there against something dark. These are four inch scissors. And uh, I really like these because when you hold it like this, you can get down to cut on the punch needle. Now, for some reason, I thought I needed a new pair because they kind of started like grabbing the thread and almost pulling it when I tried it the other day. So I went today and I bought a brand new pair and this is what the package looks like. And they are on sale right now at Joann's. I think all the Fiskars or maybe Notions or Scissors or something, 60% off. So they are high to begin with because on Amazon, these are $9.99 and I think at Walmart, they're $9.97 um, and they're like $15, $16, $17 at Joann's. So just know that when you get those coupons there, they are marked up higher than the other stores to begin with. So when they put them on sale, it's not always the best price, but these were, they came out to be $7.99, um, which was the best price. So, and then I tried them and it did the same thing, but and that, that's what it would look like with the scissors in there. So I don't know if it, it might've been that metallic thread that it just didn't want to cut that, but I'll try it um, with just the plain DMC or Valdani and see how that works out. But um, these are $9.99 on Amazon and I can leave a link down in this description if you're interested in getting those. I've had mine for years and I just had my first problem with them on Monday and I thought they went dull and I went out and bought a new pair, but it could have been the thread. So, and then also these were my sewing scissors, but I'm a bad girl and sometimes I use them on things that aren't fabric because I'm too lazy to get up and get my other scissors. So I've had those a long time. I've had them sharpened and I think that was like $10 to sharpen them well. At Joann's, I got this for $8. And these are sewing scissors. They're not just everyday paper scissors. It says sharper blades, ideal for fabric, um, stainless steel blades. And there's two. And they were, I think, $20. And whatever it was, it came out to be $8. So that is an excellent deal. I don't know how long this deal is on. I think it's the... Um, Doorbusters. I think it's a doorbuster sale. So you cannot use coupons on these. You just get the deal that they're offering. But that I thought was a great deal. So I will probably tuck one pair down in the bottom of a drawer or something. So I always have them. Um, and then I'll have a new pair of sewing scissors. So that was my haul today. Just that and two things of um, embroidered floss because that's all I needed. I don't really stock up. I just got what I needed. Okay, so today is Wednesday, and it would be Wool Wednesday if I had done any wool. And I told you that I was going to try and do this, and I didn't even touch it. It's still laying here on the table from my last floss tube. I don't know when I'll get to that. But I went to my rug hooking group last Saturday, and I thought, you know, I really think that I would like to do some rug cooking. It's been a while. I've done it before, but it's been a while. Um, and then I found this magazine and on my 
end table, you know, like you pile them up at the bottom of the end table and then you never pick them up again. Well, I picked this one up and I'm going to try to do this. It's simple. It's really small, like small and simple. So the, the, the thing is cutting the wool because you have to cut these quarter inch strips. So, but I'm going to try it. I mean, I know I can do it. When I say I'm going to try it, I know I can do it. I've done it before. I've done rug hooking before. It's just a matter of cutting the wool strips. And this is by, this is in Create and Decorate magazine. Do you remember those? 2014. That's the issue. And it's, uh, it just says, please display until February 11th, 2014. So this is January, February, 2014. And this pattern, see there's like it had some painting things in here. This pattern is designed by Julie Burns. And it is, let's see if it tells you the finished size. It says you need a piece of monk's cloth, 20 inches. I think 20 inch by two inch. That doesn't make sense. But it might be 20 inches square, and I'm going to make it smaller than that. It doesn't have to be that big. And the thing, this isn't like cross stitch. You can make this any size you want. I can make it as a coaster if I wanted to. But I, I'm just in the mood to do this, and I think I'm going to do it. Um, and right next to me is some rug hooking that I've done in the past. So let me see if I can easily get this off the wall and show you. Yeah, it's coming off really easy. So this is a washboard and I did rug hooking just to put this in the top and I'm not sure if that was a pattern or if I just did it, designed it myself but I have to do it sideways because I'm at a table but there you can see and this is this is truly an old washboard this is not like a reproduction one there's this is an antique so it's really, really simple. The other things are not matted and they're just pinned up to the wall. So I won't show you those, but um, it's, it's kind of relaxing sometimes. And I thought, even if I just take it with me to the rug hooking group and I don't work on it any other time, it, it's still, um, I think it's just something different for me to do just to break up the monotony, you know, of other things. So I did have a giveaway last um video and Asbury Echo Stitches donated this graciously. Thank you, Rhonda. And she has since last week added new patterns into her Etsy shop. So I'm going to continue to probably shout her out because I really, really like her patterns, like every one of them. So check her out. It's Asbury Echo Stitches on Etsy. And this one, it, her, they're all PDFs. And the winner of this one is one of my regular viewers and it is Char. So congratulations, Char, get in touch with me and I will email you back and get this to you. So this, thank you again, Rhonda. And thank you, Char. Um, when you enter my giveaways, you do have to be a public subscriber. So um, there is, there's tutorials. I have linked some of them on my um, community page, but if you don't want to scroll down and find them, you can just Google how to make your YouTube subscriptions public and it will tell you. And it's very important for my giveaways because I, if I, if the random comment picker picks someone that's not, I can't verify they're a subscriber, then I move on to the next person because I do those as a, um, a thank you and an appreciation for my subscribers. So you also have to be 18 years of age because I have to ask for your address and live in the U.S. And please don't ever use the word giveaway in your comments because sometimes there's like robot trolls that pick those up and then start sending out false messages. You have one and then they tell you to do all this stuff and they ask for money. And I will never do that. So if somebody asks you for money for my giveaways, it's not me. So... I always announce them on my video. Um, Robin at Bird in Hand Primitives. She has a Etsy shop. And I was just scrolling through her pattern the other day and I purchased this. And it's for Valentine's Day. But I didn't want to forget because if I didn't buy it then, I would forget. So um, 
check out her website, her Etsy page, and it's Burden. I think it's Burden Hand Prims, but just look up Burden Hand Primitives. She also has a blog, and she's got freebies on there. Uh, so I'm just looking at the pile here in front of me. This is the one that I did. This one. That's what it is. So you don't have to do it just like the picture. You can do it differently. Do it your own way. Whenever you see a pattern, just do whatever you want with it. It's okay. And then somebody posted this little wool purse that they bought. And I went online and I found it. And now there's had a whole bunch of wool pennies across here. And I decided that I like the one with the flowers. And there's, um, let me see. It has a little pin. It says it calls it a pin rest um, and needle keep are included in this pattern. So I haven't even opened it to see what's in there. But isn't that cute? And it doesn't have a zipper on the top. She said somehow it's like a metal ruler or um, tape measure, like I guess the kind of carpenters use. And it snaps closed. Yeah, metal tape measure snap for pocket opening. Two pieces, three quarter inch by 10 each, snip corners to round. So you don't put a zipper in it. So one day, maybe I will make this, but I thought it was really cute for when I get in the mood. And again, I have to buy it when I think of it or I will forget. So um, tomorrow is Thanksgiving and I hope everybody has a blessed day. And for those that it's a hard time of the year, um, prayers for peace and comfort for you. And I know it's hard for some people. Um, I'll be going to my mom's and there's going to be a, a bunch of family over there. And hopefully um, everything goes well. Sometimes we're the kind of family that you need Prozac in the stuffing. <laughs> so I'm praying that everything goes well tomorrow. And then um, next Friday, I leave for my trip to Pennsylvania. Or, or I'll be at Lori Brecklin's next Saturday at Not Forgotten Farm. And then next Sunday, I will be heading to Pennsylvania to Lancaster area. So um, if you're in that area, let me know and maybe we can meet up um, and I'm going up to see my sons and I think that's it for today. I am not going to do a giveaway today. Um, I've just got a whole lot of stuff going on, a whole lot planned. Um, oops, I have decided I will have a giveaway. So I'm inserting this little video and this is the pattern I'm going to give away. It is Bent Creek and it's called Blue Moon. And it looks like a simple little stitch there. Nice little one for Christmas with the pine tree and the red salt box house. And it says uh, stitch count is 85 over 58. So it should be really small. 5.7 by 3.9 is the design size if you stitch it on 30 count. So if you want to win this to be eligible for this, the question is, are you shopping on Black Friday? If you're already done or whatever, if you're watching this after Black Friday, put in the comments and tell me if you did shop on Black Friday. I don't think I am going to go out. Um, Old Navy has pajama bottoms for $5 until noon. So I'm thinking about possibly going and getting some of those pajamas and kind of donate my old ones and get some new ones, the pajama pants. Um, but I'm not sure if I'm going to do that yet. But so if you are interested in this, um, let's see, include the word moon, M-O-O-N. Again, you need to be 18 years old in the United States and um, do not use the word giveaway. And you must be a public subscriber. I'm going to attach a video at the end of this one. I know somewhere else in this video I said that you could Google how to do it, but I'm going to just go ahead and attach um a little tutorial video at the end of this one that tells you how to make sure your settings are public. So if you want to enter the giveaways, be sure to watch that. So use the word moon in your comment and let me know if you're shopping on Black Friday. Let's get back to the video. If you saw my nails last week, they're still growing. They're getting kind of long. I'm going to cut them this weekend. Not real short like they were, but I'm going to cut them shorter and switch over to a different color. So, um, Oh, and I'll post a picture in here. I went to an ornament exchange on Sunday and we did um, ugly Christmas sweaters. So my Christmas sweater has, um, let me just get it and show it to you. 
This is my Christmas sweater. And people told me it wasn't ugly, it was pretty, but it's, you know, it's supposed to be tacky. You got the funky sleeves and stuff. And so what I did is I painted my nails aqua to match the camper. So I have a picture and I'll insert that here. But I bought this at Kohl's um, probably about four years ago and it was on clearance. And I just thought it was perfect for me because I have a tiny camper. So we, did, we had a great time. We had a lot of fun. So um, I did exchange my little snowman Brenda Gervais ornament and um, everybody brought really nice stuff. There was nothing like really bad or tacky there. It was all good stuff. So that was good. And we had a great lunch and a great time. There were um, 19 of us. So it was fun. So everybody, happy Thanksgiving. I will see you probably early next week because once I get all this done and um, put together a little bit more, I'm going to come back and show you the finishes. And hopefully I'll have more cross stitching done. And I need to decide what I'm going to stitch next. But I think it's going to be a Lori Brecklin pattern. And I will see you next time. Don't forget, hit that thumbs up and happy stitching. Bye, everybody. Okay, I'm going to tell you how to change your settings to be public. You're going to go up here in the right corner. See that? Right up there. And you're going to click on your icon. And that comes up. And then you're going to scroll down to settings. Click on settings. Then go over here to the left on privacy, click on that, and right here it says subscriptions. Keep all my subscriptions private. I do not have mine clicked on, so if I click on it, it turns blue. Now my subscriptions are private. That is what YouTube does by default. So to be public subscriber, you want to unclick that so that it's black. And now you're a public subscriber. So then if I go back, I can check it, go to YouTube, click over here on your icon again. And even though you don't produce videos, you still have a channel. So click on where it says your channel. And then right here, it says channels again, click on that. And you'll see all the ones that you are subscribed to. If you don't see any videos there or any channels, that means you're still private and you need to go back and check it again. So that's how you do it.